Natalie, I'm on a podcast. I cannot talk right now, but I'll call you back. All right, bye. <laughs> I have no wife or assistant here today, and so that's real life, baby. You've had a very successful career in helping people transform their lives, uh, literally on the outside. But uh, I was very interested to know when I started reading through the uh, the new book, The Big Picture. I was very interested to know that much of that change happened on the inside first, right? So, Most- so, so what happened? How'd you how did you how'd you walk through that? Well, I was a miserable, sad, pathetic, lonely, single, broke man. <laughs> and a lot of people are like that man, and they don't want to yeah. be like that man. And so I didn't have good coaches, mentors, and teachers, really, you know, because it was the 60s and 70s, and it was all about, you know, winning and losing. And it wasn't really yeah. about deep thought and 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 mindset and and mindfulness. None of that stuff existed. <clears throat> but I found my first personal development books and they really had a significant change on me. I thought, well, these guys are smart enough to write a book and I'm not doing any of the things in this book. And maybe I should do some of the things in these <laughs> books. A lot of them are behind me, right? Yeah. Stacked up everywhere. That's my yeah. mountaineering section, but behind <laughs> a lot of this is personal development. You know what I mean? Yeah. Learning about how to use, you know, use the tools that you have and then learn new tools and get rid of the old things that don't work. Stop doing the same stuff that doesn't work over and over again, expecting a different result. Thank you, Albert Einstein. Yeah. I didn't even have to read his book to know that. And that, that was it, really. It was, and, and it was sort of a, and then the fitness thing came in shortly after that. And then I discovered there was a, a physical, mental, and emotional connection that I needed mm-hmm. as to, to progress forward, uh, just to get, you know, just to achieve some of the things I wanted to achieve in life. Well, I mean, so a lot of us, I think we, we, sh- we should know, well, we should take care of ourselves. We should get a lot of rest. We should control our attitudes, but many of us don't do it. The question is, is why don't we do it when we know it's what's best for us? What have you uncovered? Well, because the, the alternative is easier. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's easy to be lazy. It's easy to be yeah. angry. It's easy to point fingers. It's easy to, you know, place blame somewhere else other than yourself. You know what I mean? That, that way you're, you get off scot-free, sort of, but you're still a miserable son of a bitch. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're still broken, poor and sad and, and lonely and all those things that we don't want to be. And so, you know, it, for me, I mean, I, I wrote the big picture, you know, it's autobiographical in a sense. I mean, there, it's really a, another personal development book based on all the things that I learned along the way that applied to me that I practice every day. Yeah. And these are things that, you know, I didn't know before, uh, you know, Don Miguel Ruiz's book. And if you say that really fast, it sounds like Dom DeLuise, but it's not. <laughs> Um, I learned a lot from that simple, the four agreements. I learned a lot from that. A lot of, a lot of, you know, Gary Zukoff and Tony Robbins yeah. and, and, you know, there's just, you know, get off your ass and get busy and stop focus, stop focusing on the past and, and your expectations of the future and just be in the moment and go to work. You know what I mean? And yeah. like the, like, um, romancing the shadow, uh, Stephen Wolf's book was really powerful for me because I, a lot of people are two different people or three or four different people, depending on their audience, depending you know, yes. at home and who you are with your family. Are you the same person there as you are at work? Or yeah. Are you the same person if you're out there in the world and you're running into kind of conflict and issues? You know what I mean? And the idea is to sort of, you know, get rid of the shadow person that really is yeah. causing all the problems and be the best, be your best self. I mean, I have a, I have an event here at my house two or three times a year called the Paragon Experience. And it's really about learning how to be your best self more often than being the, the nasty, angry, curmudgeon, psycho, uh, <laughs> uh, conspiracy theory, theorist that you yeah. are. You know what I mean? Like, you know, <laughs> there's the real world and then there's the sort of the fantasy version of the world. And if you're over here, you know what I mean? Hoping that all this made up stuff inside of your head is going to all turn out OK, um, then you're going to struggle when you don't need to. So that was a lot of it for me. And then I understood that the, I understood that that physical movement has a direct connection to how I, uh, how I feel mentally and emotionally. Like I don't have a crystal ball. I can't predict the future, but I can strongly influence it by simple things like diet and hydration and mindfulness and proper sleep and regular exercise and in the right kind of supplementation. And, And when that formula is figured out, all those choices are a hell of a lot better than the lack thereof when I was younger and struggling. Yeah. Well, the crazy part with me is in knowing your career and how successful you've been. Uh, one of the things that I was expecting when I picked the book up was for it to be more about fitness than anything else. And then you start breaking down the laws and I'm like, yeah, I did that wrong. I should do that. Yeah, I did that wrong. I should do that. And, you know, I want to maybe touch on a few of the laws because I, I find that at the root of all evil, so to speak, at the root of all this, uh, 
self limitation, self self beliefs, limiting minds, all this kind of stuff mm. is a lot of the things you talk about in the book. And one of those is is the pursuit of perfection rather than improvement. Right? Is that something you personally struggle with? Is trying to be perfect before you know before you actually just thought about consistent improvement? Yeah, I mean, perfectionism, right? Especially for somebody who don't, you know, you don't have a, a high level of skill in a particular area. I mean, you know, people at NASA got to be perfect. You know what I mean? And the few times <laughs> they damn close. <laughs> the few times they haven't, it's been a disaster. You yeah. know what I mean? I mean, there's a certain amount of precision and perfection, and and um, uh, you know, uh, paying attention to the to the the, the teeniest things so that you can be successful. But the average person doesn't have to be perfect. They just need to show up. You know what I mean? They just need to be, you know, I, I talk about, I talk about, you know, chapter three is having a plan. Yeah. And being, being consistent. You know what I mean? And, you know, the first one is do your best, forget the rest. That's the first chapter. I mean, I trademarked yeah. that phrase and I learned that from Don Miguel Ruiz in his book, you know what I mean? And I, I kind of do a Tony Horton version of that, you know, his is yeah. do your best. And I focus on the fact that a lot of us are spending too much time and energy on things that do not provide us with any anything that helps us grow and change and transform yeah and we're focusing on the rest all the time like i can't and i shouldn't and my parents and the and hit their expectations and god i used to be this and all this stuff yeah. and then you know what you're just stuck and then you know weeks months and years go by and you haven't you haven't progressed so yeah you, know, you find your purpose you find out well what am i doing here like, what am i on my earth for the magic lamp steve steve wolf's not steve wolf um the magic lamp who wrote that um keith ellis's book was huge for me, helping me understand mm -hmm. why I'm here. Like, what am I doing here? Am I supposed to be, you know, an accountant or working uh, as an assistant manager yeah. at the Oak Tree Men's Store? No, you know, figure out what you're, if you don't know what, a lot of people just have a job and they have all the stuff that they love and their job is not something that they love. It's not to say that your job has to be your raison d'etre, as the French mm -hmm. said, reason for being, <laughs> right? But it, but you if you don't have a job that gives you that, you got to find an outlet. Like, what's your yeah. hobby? You know what I mean? There's a great story of a, a gentleman who was an accountant, he was very good. He had a family he provided. I'm even going to do this. My accountant's going to hate that. Um, <laughs> so, so, you know, he was, he loved bikes. He loved mountain bikes and street bikes and, and everything about bikes. And he would end up at the bike store on, on Saturdays and Sundays just because yeah. he loved it. And the people that were customers there thought he worked there because he knew so much about it. And he was just hanging out. One day yeah. the manager said, Hey, you're here all the time. Why don't you just work for me on Saturdays or Sundays? He asked his wife. His wife said, "Hey, you're there anyway. You might as well get paid." Yeah. Five years. Five years later, he owned the place. You know oh what wow! I mean? And yeah. that's just it. Like you know, what is the thing that you, Natalie? And I'm on a podcast. I cannot talk right now, but I'll call you back. All right, bye. <laughs> I have no wife or assistant here today, and so that's real life, baby. And it's um, all good. It's all good. So, We're all about so, being authentic and transparent. Around yeah, here, yeah. So. You know, I mean, so there's no smoke and mirrors here. Only really good lighting. <laughs> um, and that, that's just how, that's what I decided to do. You know, I thought to myself, I was a mime at the pier. I was working on a men's closing store. I was a handyman. You know, yeah. I had all these, I was a go-go dancer at Chippendales. So, you, know, you know what I mean? And I was just trying to survive, but I wanted to thrive, right? So most yeah. people are surviving and they're getting by. And the only good time they have is watching the ball game with their friends and having a couple of beers and some pizza. To me, that doesn't seem like a high point in my life. I yeah. like those things, but I don't make them the most important things. And so for me, it was just like, wow, I, I and, you know, I, I just read the books and I followed the lessons and I and I kept trying to do, you know, challenge myself, opening new doors, trying new things. And inevitably, a lot of them, I fell on my face, but I saw the value in some of these things. I said, you know, I'm going to keep trying. But the things that didn't resonate with me that didn't seem to work, then I discarded those. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, you know, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Life is but a dream. <laughs> You know, but too many people are trying to, you know, swim up the waterfalls and yeah. just make it harder than they have to. Especially if it's Niagara Falls. That's that's a hot mess. That's right going to be a tough swim. <laughs> Maybe not impossible, pretty damn close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you talk about, you know, finding your purpose. And obviously that's one of the uh, pivot points of the book. Um, it, there's a lot of different folks that find your purpose, find your purpose. How do you find your purpose? Find your purpose. How do you see finding your purpose? Because it sounds like curiosity has played a huge role in you kind of walking your way into the things that you enjoy most. Well, and you know, in Keith Ellis's book, there's a simple exercise, right? So you, there's two categories and category one is 
if you could be given anything you want, any career in the world, like you didn't have to work, you didn't have to lift a finger, what would it be? Astronaut, movie star, you know, <laughs> richest man of the world, whatever it would have to be, right? Yeah. Category two, though, would be if you had the time and energy and work ethic uh, and didn't mind, you know, didn't understood the time and patience that it took, what would be the things that you would love to be able to do? Now, you'll probably see a lot of the same things in both. Mm -hmm. Obviously, category one would be like, well, I don't have to work for it. Sure, I'll just, you know, I'll pick some really outrageous careers. But maybe they're not so outrageous. I mean, look at me. Yeah. I have a career that's kind of outrageous and it ended up happening. And then you pivot one and one, two and two and whatever. And then you start crossing out. All right, well, astronaut or movie star. Mm, cross mm. out astronaut. I'm going to pick movie star. What's number two? And all of a sudden, and then yeah. you, once you've gotten rid of half, then you keep doing it over and over again. You can do that exercise three or four times. And it turns out that, that there, that list will give you a general indication of kind of what most interests you, you yeah. know? And for me, it was own my own gym and to be a movie star, right? So to own my own gym, well, I'm gonna, I, I was trained in Tom Petty and Billy Idol and Annie Lennox and Bruce Springsteen and Sean Connery. Sean and, Connery, uh, yeah. Uh, Coincidentally, I've been watching all the old Bond movies recently, just for fun. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. Gold finger, <laughs> he's a man with the golden gun. Anyway, that's a classic from the 60s. And so, you know, it kind of came up for me, you know, a performer and mm -hmm. a fitness gym owner. Yeah. That's kind of what I ended up being. I don't, I, don't have, yeah. I don't have a bricks and mortar fitness facility, which is, you know, a lot of work with managers and employees and cleaning and insurance. I still have insurance because I have live events and stuff. But, <laughs> you know, I, I was doing the acting classes and the improv classes and the stand-up comedy and the scene study classes and getting the headshots and having the agents for commercial and theatrical agent, you know, and I was doing that. And then I was getting occasional acting gigs for Nordic Track and Mm -hmm. And for other, you know, beer commercials or whatever I would get. So I was getting very comfortable um, in front of a camera. And then over here, you know, I'm training some of the top celebrities and, and, and uh, rockers in the world yeah. and understanding, you know, and spending time with people with, who had tremendous success. Like you're training the boss, right? And the boss yeah. is talking about his life. Annie Lennox from the Eurythmics, her story, Billy, you know, like, oh, these are, you know, people look at these folks like, wow, you know, yeah. and I'm thinking, yeah, they're people who who found their raison d'etre and just dove in and failed and failed and failed and failed and didn't fail as much and then didn't weren't failing at all and just were successful mm -hmm. so i had those people in my life i was you know, like you know you're not just talking about bench presses and, and squats and lunges the whole time you're talking about how they got to where they are and so the combination of those two things came together to be you know basically you know when you do my one of my routines whether it's p90x or my new power of four you're entertained while you're yeah. also doing hard things physically. And so that's partly, that's a niche that I found that no one else has really gotten into. And some have tried. But, <laughs> and just haven't we, done quite as well. We kidding? <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, for me too, like, you know, even with all that work, my initial, you know, I mean, what is luck? Opportunity meets readiness. Yeah. There were a lot of, a lot of opportunities that came, and I wasn't ready. So there was no luck. But then, mm -hmm. you know, I was preparing for that. And it took, I mean, at P90X, I was 46. Yeah. I, was not, I wasn't a kid, right? There was a lot of, I lived in the same apartment for 21 and a half years, you know, with a view of a convalescent home, which is kind of where I thought I'd end up. Just go down the stairs. Across just, the alley. just walk a little further down the stairs. I'll, I'll take that <laughs> wheelchair. Thank you very much. That will be mine. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, luck is, it depends on how you look at it. For me, it was really... Yeah the work ethic and all the other jobs to survive. And then, and now I'm in a cool thriving mode. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and the work's still not over, obviously with live events and, and uh, retreats and all kinds of stuff you're doing. I mean, there's still a ton of work to do, you know, what, how much of, how much of what you're doing now is intentional strategy uh, versus just, this is what something I love to do. So I'm just doing what I love to do. That's a 50, 50 man, all the way. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I get to pick and choose what I want to do. And sometimes you make mistakes. I mean, I have 23 failed businesses. Mm -hmm. People don't know that. Tony, let's do mouth guards. Let's do insoles. I have, <laughs> let's do home delivery food. I had a deal going with 7-Eleven to put TH Kitchen. So I have a, T, I have a Tony Horton Life brand, TH Life brand, which mm -hmm. is, you know, supplement, not supplements, but it's um, my hair care product, which is yeah. TH Care. 
Uh, you can, you know, I have shampoo, I have my own shampoo and stuff. You know, I mean, we, I make not a whole lot of money on that one. I don't put a lot of energy into it, but I, I I'm fortunate I'm not one of your customers there. Yes, but there's skincare. Oh, right? well, and there's skincare there's, you I do. use. Skincare, moisturizer, I can you know, organic <laughs> oils, uh, and then shave, shave balm. You get all over that. Uh, no, I can do that because I got to get the line right on the beard, right? So that's right. Yeah, you don't, <laughs> don't want to look. You don't want to look uh, like you haven't uh, shaved in uh, about six months. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you know, for me, it was really about uh, you know focusing on the things that I wanted to focus on. And um, uh, even though there were 23 failed businesses, hey, let's, I had my own watch for 10 seconds. I had my own, you know, I, I had a deal with that 7-Eleven where we were going to put, you know, TH uh, Kitchen in every 7-Eleven around the world. You know, I was counting my castles at that point. And then, you know, 7-Eleven decided they'd rather sell cigarettes and hot dogs than, than healthy food. So mm. that was their choice. Um, but along the way, you, you know, as an entrepreneur, you know, I mean, somebody calls you up or somebody emails yeah. you. And, hey, here's this opportunity. I mean, I just met with this physical therapist out of out of Vegas, this guy, Scott, and he's got this amazing device and we're going to have our I just I just fell in love with him as a person. I mean, he works yeah. with the top top football, basketball, baseball players in the country. You know, everybody knows who he is. Uh, he's a he's a big deal in his industry. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll do something with him. Who knows? But that's how Tonal, I, I saw Tonal and I was like, this is an amazing piece of equipment. I just called him up. I said, yeah. hey, uh, you know, and it's cool because people kind of know who I am. You know, I mean, that helps. Yeah. So like, oh, oh the P90X. It's not, quite a, it's not quite a cold call is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like I can just go, oh, hi, I'm, I'm you know, uh, Steve Sashin, who's the, the CEO and creator and founder of Zero Shoes. You know what I mean? I saw his, I saw his little infomercial when I was watching a rock climbing video and I, called him up you know what i mean he's so it's just interesting how that that can work now i i'm at that point in my career where i can do those kind of things and make those mm -hmm. kind of connections it doesn't necessarily mean that there's always going to be some synergy there i mean obviously like, uh oh you have all the meetings and you pay all the lawyers and then you when it comes down to crunching numbers you go oh well yeah, yeah that's not going to work out it seemed a, like it was going to be fun but it turns out it might yeah. be bankrupt yeah. i probably Total, it was a ma marriage made in yeah. heaven love it uh, you know the folks over at golden hippo the parent company for power life which is my supplement brand I mean, right away we sat down, you know, negotiations never easy, but we just, we were just so determined to make it work because I love who they were and they love me. And, and yeah. now I have, you know, I, you know, I've got 10 different SKUs, you know, from protein to, you know, digestive stuff to, um, you know, a pre-workout, you know, it's just, and I take my own stuff every day because it was really custom made for me. So, mm -hmm. and a lot of, you know, it's doing great. And, and now I, you know, I have, basically four balls in the air. And that for right now feels like enough, but you know, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> four, four, is, four is quite a bit. I have seven businesses. Throw that fifth ball in, throw it in. Yeah, right. I got it. I got this yeah, thing. Exactly. Come on, baby. Yeah, I got seven businesses myself. Fortunately, uh, two of them are based on autopilot. The other, the other ones take a lot of consistent work ethic, a lot of focus. I've got a management meeting when we're done here and then another podcast. Like it's, it's, it's consistently. And that's one of the things that I've always struggled with is switching my brain in between projects. I'm curious to know with, with so many successful things that you've worked through and, and you've developed, how much of that is switching or how much of it is just consistent, meaning it's a consistent um, escalation of what you're already doing? Well, my persona, I mean, the reason why I do what I do, whether it's my own business or working for somebody else, my persona is consistent throughout. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's not like I'm an actor where I have to play, you know, a criminal over here and Santa Claus over there. You know, I mean, yeah. it's just sort of a, hey, be enthusiastic, be upbeat, be honest, be authentic, and then go to work. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, it's pretty easy. And having had that acting background, it's pretty easy to do that. It's the transition from one to the other is I don't even have to think about it, really. Yeah. You know I, mean? I mean, not that every day is perky and upbeat. And, you know, <laughs> I have some days where I'm just tired and I'm sore yeah. and, uh, and there's and I feel like the weight of the world is on me a little bit. But I have a very strong mindfulness practice. Right. So oh, I feel kind of worn down. Epsom salt bath, yay, and I get in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or hey, I'm I'm not having I'm having a tough time falling asleep right now. Let's meditate. Let's do some 5.5 breathing that I learned from you know David Nestor out of the book Breath. Oh mm -hmm. wow, he's a smart guy. He did all the research. Let me just do this one simple breathing yeah. technique, and I fall asleep and, and sleep like a baby. You know, it's cool. It's like you have to be willing to learn, and then you have to be willing to practice the things that you learn. And if they work, great. If they don't try other stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, that's not, 
<clears throat> like nobody questioned that you had to go to first grade and then second grade and then third grade. Like think of all the, you know, for yeah, example, progressions, 12, yeah. 12 years there's a school. Yeah. And then maybe I'll go to a, get an advanced degree four more. And then maybe I'll get my doctorate for, I mean, some people are just learners. Other people can't get out of school fast enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and they just like, they're, they become very myopic. Right. And then they become very myopic and very pious at yeah. the same time. <clears throat> and typically not always those folks run into more walls than folks that are, you know what I mean? Either you have a fixed mindset or you have a flexible slash growth mindset. I mean, everybody's heard those two terms before. Yeah. Fixed mindset folks, you know what I mean? Are you going to be the fittest, happiest, most financially successful folks in the world? I don't know. You're going to have to work a whole lot harder if your brain's looking through a, <laughs> looking through a pinhole. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you're open-minded and willing to try stuff, like, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, you just got to reach out. I and mean, who is, like, one of the things I, that I talk about quite often is, you know, who's in your circle, who's in your tribe, mm -hmm. right? And if you got go-getters and fun people with great senses of humor and are really authentic and tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, then you're, you're hanging around with the right kind of people where you're going to grow faster and more successfully yeah. as opposed to finger pointers and wannabes and naysayers, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and they're in your family. They might even be in your house yeah. and, you know, you got to learn how to tap dance around all that. You just got to find a skill, a skill a skill level there to deal with it all. I'm, I'm really good at, at eliminating uh, bad people out of my life. I don't, I don't, I, you know, forever and ever like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to help this person. I'm going to, I'm going to mm -hmm. deal with this person. I'm going to hang. Ugh, right. And yeah. so it just, it's just like, wow, you're just, the, they're just human anchors on, on, on your happiness and growth. And so, you know, I mean, if you're going to be a bonehead and you're going to prove it and you're not going to, you're not willing to change or even apologize for who you are and what you've done. Bye bye. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you that. I mean, so you've got, so obviously there are, letter, there are 11 laws, principles, if you will. There are, there are two or three of them that I think go hand in hand, but I'm also, if I'm being honest, I'm like, okay, well, like for example, right. The variety of spice of life. So that's, you know, making sure that you have enough um, variety of things coming in. But yet you got to be consistent long enough to try it to make it work. But then if you don't love it, you leave it. So I, I'm curious. I'm curious to know, like, um, at what point have you tried long enough and been consistent and, and discovered that it's not fruitful and you, it's time to move on versus, hey, I just need to put in a little extra work. Well, well I mean, I, that kind of comes down to the individual. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, <clears throat> like, you know, love it or leave it has a lot to do with with. For me, originally, that had to do with just exercise. There's a lot mm -hmm. of trends and fads out there that everybody's, you know, and you know, if you got a, if you got a pretty good marketing team, you can fool anybody into buying your thing. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then you do that thing, and you can't figure out why you're miserable and hurt and bored. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, but you keep doing it because you know everybody else you know is doing it. I mean, if Orange Theory is your thing um, and you love it, then that's probably something you should continue to do. But at the same time, is Orange Theory the only thing you're ever going to do for the rest of your life? Maybe not. Maybe you might want to take a yoga or Pilates class, or maybe you want to start lifting weights. Uh, you know, my wife is into this a a a AKT program. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, it's, it's got dance in it. And there's dance stuff. And there's also standard cardio and, and, and resistance training kind of stuff. It's a really unique, interesting mix. And I think the reason why she loves that and also the reason why she loves Orange Theory is there's a bunch of variety there, a bunch of variety with P90X, P90X2, P90X3. You're working yeah. on your weaknesses as much as your strengths, right? And I, you know, my hope is that you'll love my stuff because it provides you with that variety and you understand yeah. that philosophy about fitness. You know what I mean? But that can also apply to other things in your life. Like if you're only hanging around with your, like your high school buddies, right? And there's all these people that are coming into your life like you're, you're, you've got this really small group. Do they provide enough stimulation in your life where you feel like you're growing and changing and experiencing new things? Right. Yeah. I mean, if you went to a rock climbing gym and none of your rock and none of your buddies were rock climbers, I'm guessing you'd have a whole new experience, a whole new bunch of friends and a whole new yeah. skill level. That's where variety comes into play. And, and, and you can experiment with, with different things. You know, back to the, I'm going back and forth between the love it and the leave it and do your best to get the rest. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what I was hoping for. I mean, it's because right, right. I, so, I think, I think it's where people are at, right. They're trying to yeah. figure out like when, try, when, when, try everything. Yeah. Right? yeah. And eventually you'll find your, your niche. And if, you know, and, and, um, but the thing is like, for example, plyometrics, I hate mm -hmm. plyometrics, right. I mean, 
I have it scheduled for tomorrow night at 5.30. I invite 30 people to come, not, not all 30 show up, but usually I'll get five or six or two or three, or maybe sometimes as many as 10. And I only do it because I love what it does for me. Like mm -hmm. jumping up and down Northeast, Southwest, you know I mean, for, for an hour and 10 minutes, 30, 40, 50 reps of this stuff. It's just hideous. You know, yeah. it's hit training. It's just like, just like you're fried and burnt, <laughs> breathing, your hands around your knees in between every exercise. You're trying to go as high as you can, trying to go as deep as you can. And I'm 63 years old. And so my body's like, F you, buddy. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm a skier, right? And so yeah. I work my legs Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I have to add that variety in there. Do I love those things? No. Am I going to leave them? No. But what I love about them is mm. what they provide for me, right? So there's that's the difference between, like you know, it's not like, hey, quit everything unless you're smiling and have a good old time, like you're watching a comedy show. Yeah. No, sometimes you you know you get to love what you're doing, but you also might not love what you're doing, but you love what it does for you. So there's, yeah. there's the nuance there. So that so my I, that was kind of cool because I I was like benefit. Okay, so if there's a I may it may be difficult for me, but if there's a benefit for me, there may be a cause to hang with it. If you understand the benefit and you don't get bored, hurt, or plateau, mm -hmm. then it's probably something that you want to stick stick with because you're seeing what it's doing for you. You're getting leaner. You're getting more muscular. You're burning body yeah. fat. You're becoming more athletic, right? Your balance, your speed. You know, it's not just cardio and resistance anymore. It's speed, balance, and range of motion too, right? Yeah. If you look at like the, I focus more on speed, balance, and range of motion. I still do my resistance. I did it this morning. I did shoulders and arms. I did 24 mm -hmm. sets of shoulders and arms. I'm still going to do that. And I'm still going to do basic cardio when I when cardio comes. <clears throat> I understand those benefits, but I'm back to the variety again now, right? So mm -hmm. you, if you've asked that the Pandora's box is open now, Stephen. So yeah, let's go. So, so that that's the reason why, like my, my shoulders and arms routine today, I'd never done it before. Like, you know, there's, there's about 10,000 moves in my head. And so I'll just, <laughs> two buddies that walk in, they go, okay, okay, <laughs> Dr. Frankenstein, what do we got today? And I'll think, let's do brachial brachialis curls. Let's do <laughs> bare push-ups. And they'll get in my tonal and do like these front up, upper chest, show, like just wacky, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Wacky combinations. And that that keeps the boredom and the, and the plateaus and the, and the injuries away. Um, and there's that, and then the variety is there too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and I, and I, I love kind of creating things on the spot. That's one thing that I do love. And I think my friends like it. The reason why they show up over here, cause they don't what, you know, they don't, they don't know what to expect. It, it really is. It's, it really is entertainment. And they like, hang. What are we, we doing hang, today? We <laughs> yeah. We hang out and tell jokes in between and, and throw up in our mouth a little bit. It's all part of the deal, man. <laughs> you can't, you can't go, go away from a good friendship, a little, with a little vomit in there. <laughs> a little bit. I am kidding about that, by the way. I don't want yeah. To. I'm, not, well, I'm curious. I'm, I, what, what's um how important is being flexible in life as also also being flexible in physiology how important are those two things it's huge oh my god it's everything you know i, I spoke about it a little bit earlier in our conversation but but kind of a myopic pious way of looking at the world just limits you from from other philosophies and thoughts and methods and techniques and ideas you know what yeah. I mean? Like my way or the highway, like what, what in the world? What are you doing? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, look, if you're happy and joyous and, and you got your little small crew and, and you're not being mean and angry and awful to other people um, and you feel like, you know, because if you are somebody who has that, you, you have a very limited experience in life. But mm -hmm. maybe that's that's just your nature. And that's what you I'm happy with it. I don't like people just don't fly in airplanes. They ain't going out, you know what I mean? They just <laughs> the thought of getting an airplane is just too much and they don't do it. And I'm not gonna force anybody to, you know, go from here to to Tokyo. But you know, there's there's more pe people in this country who don't have a passport than do. Yeah. And that's really unfortunate because they don't get to see anything. You know what I mean? They get yeah. to go to the Grand Canyon and the Eiffel. And no, 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 Eiffel Tower. And and the. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, did the, they move that thing? <laughs> yeah, they moved. Yeah, it's in it's in Vegas now. I don't know if you noticed. Um, but you know, I've been to Tokyo and I've been to to South Korea and I've been to Europe and and uh, you know I've been to from Kosovo to South Korea. You know, I mean, I've seen and a lot of it has to do with with people who have done P90X and the huge fans. And so the Pentagon get, ring rang me up and said, "Hey, do you want to go on some tours?" Um, you know, and so it, it's just like, that's just one example of people not taking advantage 
because uh, uh, they're scared. It's all based in fear. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, I don't speak the language. What am I going to do? And how am I yeah. going to communicate with people? They overthink things. You know what I mean? <clears throat> like, I, if you talk about, like, one of the things I talk about in the book is reverse engineering something. So if yeah. you're going to go yeah. climb Kilimanjaro, right? It's not like you just hop in a plane and show up, you know, with, with a with, with a suitcase and, and, and a couple of ropes, maybe to, get, to the, get to the top <laughs> when you realize there's some stuff to do. So, you know, you call the right people, you talk to certain folks who, who do you want to do it? You plan out ahead, like you set a date and then you look at all the you do all the research. I mean, you got Google and Bing, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of ways you just <laughs> just get on your keyboard and there'll be answers there. You know what yeah. I mean? And so you see yourself on, you know, like the first thought, you see yourself on the top. What are you wearing? What's the temperature? What's it look like? Is it sunny or cloudy? I mean, it sounds like sort of rudimentary. What did the day before look like that? And the day before that, all the way to the point where you think, man, you know, I want to go climb Kilimanjaro, right? So, uh, and any kind of goal is like that. You know what I mean? I never thought of myself to be somebody who sold over a billion dollars worth of fitness. You know what I mean? But I did, I did see myself after having read a lot of personal development books, what mm -hmm. my final day, a lot of people do vision boards, you know, that's the one way of doing it, right? I never yeah. got that far, like, you know, putting up their favorite car and what their house would look like and blah, blah, yeah. blah. You know, that's a form of reverse engineering your future. Um, and again, we don't have crystal balls, but we do have, we do have an influence on our future. So, um, you know, what are the things that you need to do right now just to improve your life in general? What gives you the what gives you the, what are the things that you need to do to give you the energy and enthusiasm to go after your goals? Yeah. Energy and enthusiasm, right? And so if your life is filled with pain and fatigue, you're not going to have the energy and enthusiasm <laughs> to go, to go yeah. do what you want to do. And pain and fatigue is a constant in a lot of people's lives. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Bad backs, bad knees, bad shoulders. They're just exhausted. A lot of that has to do with you know, lack of mobility, lack of exercise, poor diet, their inflammation is everywhere. They probably have leaky gut or irritable bowel syndrome. There's mm -hmm. all these things that are happening where you can survive, like you can survive with irritable bowel syndrome. You can survive with leaky gut, but it creates pain and fatigue. And so yeah. forget about your goals. I just need to get to work and not to get <laughs> fired so I can pay my I need bill. that extra cup of coffee, please. Yeah, yeah. So I can sit on my ass all weekend and just, you know, survive the week. Ick. Right. Yeah. So, and, and by the way, exercise hard, changing your diet hard, quitting drinking hard, quitting smoking hard, making new friends hard. This stuff is hard. And you yeah. know what I mean? But it's worth it in the end. And then yeah. after, after, after the first, your head's hitting the wall, it's not hard anymore. It's just part of who you are and you're a brand new person and you're an elevated human being. You are on a different yeah. level than, than who you used to be. And that is that. I mean, I, I have 2,000 people in this power of four power nation group the stories coming out of that thing because it's food fitness supplementation and mindfulness those mm -hmm. are the four elements to it right it's not just the exercise you got to eat right you've got to mm -hmm. you got to let the pendulum swing in the other direction once in a while what is your mind what are your top 10 mindfulness practices <laughs> write them down do them meditation Na by the way napping is one you get to write that down like oh, i get to go <laughs> lay down and do nothing for five ten minutes yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you you know you're burning candle at both ends. No wonder. You know what I mean? Yeah. Walking your dog, playing with your kids, gardening. You know what I mean? Um, there's so many. You know, not, mindfulness isn't you know hour and a half lotus meditation. You know what I mean? Inside of a refrigerator, it's, it doesn't have to be that that painstaking. It can be anything that takes your mind off the grind. That's yeah. really what mindfulness is. And a lot of people don't do it because they feel guilty about just shutting the hell up and you know, and doing something that's selfless, you know? Yeah. Well, it seems like they're, um, and I deal with this a lot with a lot of folks that I've worked with. Um, it's giving yourself permission to do, giving yourself permission to take a nap, giving yourself permission to eat better, giving yourself permission to evaluate your relationships. Like I, so much of it seems like of, uh, I'll use the word suffering. Cause I mean, uh, suffering to one person is, is as painful as it is to somebody else based on what it is. Right. So they, they suffer through life. Maybe it's a leaky gut. Maybe it's not having rest. Maybe it's having low flexibility, low mobility. Uh, maybe it's limiting beliefs, any number of different things, but it, you're basically not giving yourself permission to move forward. And for some reason, it seems to me that people have a hard time giving themselves permission to do. Have you ran into that as well with, with all the programs that you have? Absolutely. Because it's not, it's not part of their history. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And most people don't most like, usually when you're in, you know, elementary school, high, junior high school, high school, a lot of this stuff isn't even on the radar. You know what I mean? Yeah. It just isn't on the radar. And then once you get into, you know, uh, 
your 20s and 30s, you kind of fall into this grind and you have no history of that. And then at some point there needs to be sort of a, some kind of a, the Japanese call it a Satori, like some sort mm -hmm. of a- Awakening know, maybe? A, a, awakening, tipping point, whatever it is, something that severe has to happen before they go, wait a minute, man, none of this is working. And, and sometimes people get, they're too far gone. You know, they're in their 50s, 60s and 70s and, and there's nothing that you just don't have the wherewithal or the work ethic or the, or the history to be able to make those kind of changes. Um, and that's why people like me exist. And that's why the, the authors like this exist. And that's the yeah. reason why there's, there's Deepak Chopra and Tony yeah. Robbins and, and Gandhi and, and Christ, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> not, I'm not putting myself in that category, but just people who do, you know, like, who try to, who try to make, make a better life for themselves and then share yeah. that with other people. And then hopefully they can, you know, I mean, I mean, I, I have hundreds of thousands of fans um, and, uh, and that's, amazing really <laughs> yeah so it is amazing well I because think, they, I think you know what i mean they've read my book and they've done my yeah. programs and and a lot of them have been the majority knows the minority have been consistent with that the yeah. majority yeah. seem to kind of still struggle um you know and i, I can know i'm only one guy i can only do so much and tap into so many people but um that's what it's about it's sort of reaching out to yeah and, then, and we're getting back to the people in your life like you know over here i'm trying to better myself but over here i got a, people that are just not good people yeah and i keep hanging out with them and i keep having conversations with them and they're having an influence on me right yeah. they're, they're talking about so influence goes both ways basically yeah 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 so you know you gotta you know uh, one of the one of the i stopped caring what other people think about me a long time ago yeah how has that still, benefited I, you because i i find that people have a hard time with that yeah i mean i still comb my hair in the morning you know what i mean and i still, <laughs> still you know what I mean? I can Maybe a little deodorant here, like, there, that kind of I stuff. Don't, right? I don't want to look like Rip Van Winkle as I sit here. Um, yeah, I mean, there's there's subtlety to that statement because I still, of course, care. You know, I have to be very conscious of who I am and how I am. I mean, I was a stand-up comic, and a lot of my material was very blue. You know what yeah. I mean? I was a Sam Kennison guy and a, and a, um, uh, Richard Pryor. I mean, you know, like irreverent. Andrew Dice Clay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, just you know, I mean, I, I, I was outrageous, but I was also young and immature, and I thought that the more f bombs I threw around the front, the more laughs I would get, and that turned out not to be true. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? And so, one of the things you have to do is kind of know your audience. You know, mm -hmm. I'm very conscious of who I'm speaking with and who and how I'm how I'm, I'm relating to those folks and transcending. There's, a, I heard a great story. A friend of mine's daughter is in a Division three basketball team. It's a very good school, and they mm -hmm. hired a Division one coach. Now this division one coach, she didn't, these, none of her recruits were at this school, right? She was just kind of thrown into this thing and she's a mean, horrible son of a gun. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. she doesn't give any positive feedback. One girl had like 30 points and 14 rebounds and she screamed and yelled at her at halftime because wow. whatever, I don't know, you know what I mean? So yeah. kids are quitting the team because this, this is a professional mentor, coach, trainer, yeah. and she doesn't even know how to communicate with her players. That that's just insanity to me. You know what I mean? So you know, sometimes you're a trainer, sometimes you're a shrink, sometimes you're a therapist, sometimes you're, you know what I mean? It's kind of, get, you know, read the room. Um, yeah. that, that's really, really, really important. And I think I do that pretty well most of the time. And that's part of my success, I think. When I think, you know, essentially that's, that's what we're trying to unbundle is, you know, <clears throat> the big picture, right? The, the 11 laws that can ultimately transform or change your life, right? It's, it's trying to break those things down. And I know we, We've touched upon on several subjects um, today, and I'm grateful that you've had time to come on and, and hang out with me for a little bit. I've had a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it a big time. I am curious, where can everybody actually go out and find the book as of right now for those that want to you know, take a deep dive into transforming their life? Well, let's give Bezos another rocket ship. Okay. So you're going to have to go to Amazon. <laughs> Maybe he can give you, a seat if you, give, you a, give you a seat if you sell enough books, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I like, to, I like to get past the stratosphere at some point. Um, yeah, Amazon.com, the big picture. There she blows. That's where you'll find it. Awesome. Well, as far as uh, everybody staying connected with you, obviously you got all this stuff going on. Where, where, where is the best place to connect with you and learn more about what's going on? Well, TonyHortonLife.com. That's really that. That you know, you'll see my Instagram, my Twitter, my Facebook, my 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 YouTube. All my stuff is there. If you want to buy my supplements, that's where you do it. If you want to buy my fitness equipment, I've got power stands and and mats mm -hmm. and jump ropes and med balls and whatnot. All all right there. TonyHortonLife.com. You can let me look at my little list here. Let's see. Uh, YouTube, just Tony Horton. That's easy. Um, Instagram at Tony S Horton. 
Da 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 da. And you'll find me in all those fun places. <laughs> Rock hey, on, one thing about one thing about TonyHortonLife.com. A lot of live events. We've got a we've got a ski event coming up. Ski trip in Jackson Hole in January, end of January. If you're a skier, a snowboarder, uh, it's very intimate. It maxes out at 30 people. We've got 20 oh, right that's now. Good. 10, more, 10 more spaces. So that's, that's good. Be, that'd be fun. Yeah. yeah, and there might and there might be snow out here. Maybe, maybe some snow. By January, dirt cross your fingers. I hope. Please, please. <laughs> kind of hard to ski without the powder, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, dude, I've enjoyed done. having it's you done. on, man. Say that again, Stephen. I said I've enjoyed having you on, man. We got to do this again. My pleasure. Yeah, I, I will definitely come back if you have me. Rock on, brother. All right, well, have a good one. See you. Yep. Bye. If you love that interview, go ahead and check out this next one right here. Much of depression, much of anxiety, much of what we call mental illness is in fact a gut illness that yeah. is manifested in our, you know, in our behavior.